Okay, hello, welcome to another session of uh, VHDL Design. Uh, today we're going to be talking a little bit about uh, the generate statement. And the generate statement is an important statement in VHDL because it allows you to duplicate or create large structures uh, using small components. So the idea of a generate statement is it gives the designer the option of reproducing concurrent statements over and over and over again um, without having to write them all out, right? So you can create a looping structure that will allow you to generate multiple implementations of a particular design. So let's start by taking a look at um, some of the different flavors of the generate. There's two different generate statements that you can use in VHDL. Uh, and generally when you're imp implementing a generate statement, you're doing so so that you can create multiple components typically. Now you don't have to do that, you're not limited at all because it can do any concurrent statements. So the generate uh, structure can, can reproduce multiple concurrent statements, not necessarily component declarations, although uh, that or instantiations, although that tends to be the primary use for it. So think in terms of Let's say you wanted to create a memory structure and you have uh, a register definition as a component that uh, controls a 32-bit register with um, synchronous load, whatever, uh, in your design, but you want to create a memory structure with 1,024 of those. You could go through and specifically specify each individual component and that would take pages and pages of code, or you could use a for generate statement which will loop through 1024 times and create uh, 1024 of those units for your design. And so that's a far more efficient way to create large structures using uh, individual components. So to do that, we have these two statements that we can use. And basically the first statement and the most important statement for this would be the for loop. So we have a, a for generate loop so basically you do a for loop uh, and then the generate statement and then you can you have local declarations just like in many of the other structures in VHDL. And then you have a begin and this is where the concurrent statements go that you're gonna reproduce over and over again, right? So the basic is this is the list of statements that you're gonna reproduce and the outer part of this structure is responsible the outer part of this structure here is responsible for setting those up. So you're setting up the loop structure with the for generate, and then you're just reproducing what's in the concurrent read in multiple times. So it's a pretty straightforward declaration, um, just like a for loop is in, in VHDL, when, which we've seen before in the past in some of our designs. The next statement that we can do is called a uh, if generate statement. And basically, it starts off with the if and then the generate keyword after the expression, and the expression evaluates true or false. And so if it's true, then these concurrent statements here are gonna be generated in the design. Now, this isn't a looping structure, it only ha happens once, right? So you do the test and you see if that test is true, and if so, you generate the stuff. So you can either generate it or not generate it with the if statement. When you combine the for generate with the if generate, then you can create some pretty complex structures. And we're gonna see an example of that in a second where they, we're combining both the if statement and the uh, for uh, generate statement together to create a more complex uh, uh, unit of design, or design. Okay, so again, for loop and an if statement for the generate statement. So, what we're gonna do is, in order to, to demonstrate this, and I always feel like um, having an example is the best way to demonstrate how something works. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back to the old digital days when you were learning digital for the first time, and you created a ripple carry adder. You probably remember this back in the day. This is a horribly inefficient way to do add addition inside uh, a digital circuit. Uh, but it's something that's really easy to see and understand how the four generate work, uh, loop works and so that's why I'm using it here. Um, so if we take a look, when we deal with a, uh, when we're doing an, a ripple, um, ripple carry adder, what's actually happening is 
we're starting off with a full adder structure. So right here is our full adder structure. Remember the full adder actually has a single bit input here and then a single bit there. So you're adding the two together, but you also have a carry in. So you have two values, two bit values, and then a carry in. And then you have a sum bit on the output and a carry out of the full adder. So this is adding a single bit to another single bit with potentially a carry from an, a carryover from another bit. And then it's purely combinational circuit. So we've created this component that we call full adder in a separate file somewhere else as part of our design. It's a component in another part of the design. And now we're gonna bring it into this design, which we're calling adder four. And its job is gonna be to create a four bit ripple carry adder, okay? So I've drawn a structure down here that shows how the four bit ripple carry actual, uh, actually looks, uh, look what it looks like. So we're gonna have a bus structure coming in of, sorry about that, with a four bit input bus for A, a four bit input bus for B. So we're taking two four bit values and adding them together. And then we're going to have on the output, a sum value on the output plus a single bit for a carry out uh, for that operation. So this is a four bit adder and it just has a carry out and then you have four bits of sum and then a carry out of that, right? Standard addition. Now, the beauty of this is you we know how we could expand this, right? So we could create a 32 bit adder or a eight bit adder or a uh, 16 bit adder. So it doesn't matter when we're doing four generates, we're just reproducing multiple pieces. And I just made it four to make the, make the example a lot easier to follow. Now, one thing I do want to point out, and it's really important here is that, um, they're not all created equal. Uh, in fact, this adder here is a little different than the other adders in this chain. And the main thing that makes it different is basically right here, we have a, um, a ground signal going into the carry in because it's the least significant bit of our design, then that least significant bit has no carry going into it. So there is no carry into the least significant bit. But all the other carry ins are carrying in from the other bits. And so those are fairly common. So that's why we use the if statement in our for generate loop to really distinguish between those unique connections that we, we have to take into account uh, that don't affect the others. So all of these basically connect up the same way because they connect up to the um, A bus and the B bus and the SUM bus, and maybe to different elements of that bus, but still connecting to the same bus. And they each take a carry from the previous element. And then this one is the, like we said before though, this one is the one that's kind of unique and we'll see where we solve that problem by using the if statement in our if generate um, process or uh, instructions later. All right, so let's jump ahead. I'm gonna make that clean because we may be coming back to this. And let's take a look at uh, some example code that creates this. So we're gonna, we're gonna create this with our, with our code, our sample code in VHDL. So this is a really simple component. Uh, basically, we're creating a four-bit adder that has a a, a four-bit A and a four-bit B value. Uh-oh, I found a bug. Got to fix this. Got to fix this in the notes. This should be three down to, and that should be three, and that should be three. So these are these are all four-bit buses, right? Uh, and then this one, of course, would be. Um, that's actually going to be two down two because uh, that's 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 two of those. So sorry about that, but I'll fix that in the notes. But that this uh, is the way uh, that you would declare these signals as part of the component. Okay, so these are part of the component. There's your sum out and then a single bit for the carry out for our adder. So that's our four bit adder. Now we're going to create the four bit adder by taking these other components, these full adders, and basically reproducing them together. So we need four of them. So we'll start by setting up a for loop. So let me change the orientation of this uh, scrolling so that it makes it easier for us to, to show this example. So 
what we're going to do is we're going to come in here and say, all right, we're going to generate uh, from zero. Oh, there it goes again. I've got to go in and fix that. From zero to uh, three. So we're going to go look at every bit of uh, uh, for, for every element. So we're going to create four of these units. So we got bit zero through bit three of our adder. And so we're adding each bit together. And so for every single bit, we're going to loop and our loop structure loops around uh, this part here. Okay, so it loops around that part there. Now you'll see that our, our inside the for loop, inside the for structure, we've created um, two if blocks, okay? And these are if generate blocks. And the reason we did this is because we wanted to differentiate between that least significant bit, which has a different feed for the carry in than the other bits. And so to do this, we just basically check to see, and this is where our conditionals come in. We're going to check to see if I is zero. In other words, are we on the zero bit? And if we are, then we're going to generate this. Down here, we say if I is not equal to zero, then we do this. So only one of those is going to be generated, right? So it's either this top one or the last one because of the conditions I put on there. So if it is equal to zero, then I'm going to generate this, and notice how here I attach to the carry in. Okay, so we're using positional association here, which means the third argument, the third argument is the carry in, right? And so that carry in is right here. And so the third argument is zero, which means it's tied to ground or a low input, so there is no carry in. And then the rest of these are tied to the appropriate bits of the bus. So if you look here, we use the index i to refer to individual bits in the bus. So we start with bit zero of a and b. So that would be zero of a and that's zero of b. Okay, so zero of a here and zero of b here. Then we go to the zero bit of the sum. And then we have a special carry signal that we've created inside to carry all of the carry bits from one device to the other. And so carry zero would correspond to the bit coming out of the zero bit for the, the zero uh, full adder, uh, bit zero full adder. If it is not bit zero, in other words, it's down here, then we do it like normal. We accept one of the things that's a little different is our input, our carry in, is now coming from the previous adder. So we're basically tying the previous adder's carry to, to, the, to the carry. So let's look at the diagram again. Notice how in here, we're having the carry ripple through the adders and we're tying it to the previous carry. So this is bit one here. Then we're taking the previous carry and feeding it to the input. And then now this feeds to the current carry uh, on the output, right? And so that's how all this thing is tied together and that's how the code is working for us. This is a very efficient way to create very large structures. Now, obviously for four, it doesn't seem very efficient, but if we were doing 64 or 32, it would be incredibly efficient as far as the code generation. As far as adding would be concerned, it would be horribly inefficient because of the ripple carry. Um, but that's, this is an example to show you how to do generate. Now, we could have generated a memory structure with 8-bit registers, 32-bit registers, whatever, and use the for generate to generate those register uh, elements inside of our structure. And that's oftentimes how you'll see uh, the generate statement used is to generate large memory type structures in, in our system. But I wanted to do this because it, it simplifies the process so you can see all the various, uh, the, the simple elements that are part of it. So hopefully that helps us get started. Uh, this is a really short video. Basically, it's a, it's a fairly straightforward concept, but an important one. And so I did want to dedicate a video to this one. But this is how the, the forward generate works. It allows you to just duplicate any concurrent statements, not just component declarations. In this example, we just declared new components. But... Uh, you can do any concurrent statements. Typically, though, it is component uh, generation that, that they do this with. Uh, so hopefully that helps you and your VHDL design. 
Uh, thanks for spending the time with me, and we'll see you next time in our next video. See you later.